let's get started. First what I have here is a piece of watercolor paper. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the smooth side versus the rough side. You're going to want to take some um, stenciling tape and what I see a lot of people do is you can take it and you can just go ahead and tape your paper down and what this does is it leaves a really nice uh, clean white border on the edge but we're not going to do that because we are going to be cutting our image down so what we're going to do is take some of this tape and just double it stick it on the back and then press down and what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to be able to work on the surface without the paper slipping around and sometimes when you add water to it the paper wants to bend and this will keep the paper from doing just that okay when I'm blending my watercolors I really like to work off an acrylic block so I'm just going to set that up there and I'll show you how that's going to be used I'm going to show you how I store my peerless watercolor papers I store them uh, in a binder and then what I have inside are business card holders and so each one of these watercolors comes on one of these slips of paper you actually pull the color from the paper itself and then I've just gone ahead and labeled each one so that way it makes it easier for me the back of the paper actually shows you what the true color is the top of it is just heavily pigmented so it's hard to tell the color just by looking at the front. We're going to be using uh, Jacqueline Mo Red and Wisteria Violet, and I'll turn that over. Whoops, so you can see exactly what that looks like. And there's so much color concentrated on these, you can use them for a long time. I'm going to take my water and I'm just going to go ahead and spritz some water on the acrylic block. And like I said, I'm going to use this to mix my colors. And then you'll notice underneath I've placed a transparency. Um, underneath my paper just so it doesn't get really wet. So I'm going to really saturate my paper here. It's okay if you get some paint, ink, or anything like that on there because it's not going to show when we're done. So just really saturate it. You want it to almost be puddled on top of your paper. And the reason for that is because when we go ahead and touch it with these colors, um, it's just really going to bleed all over. So you can see how heavily pigmented these colors are. And watch as I tap it on, and that's all you're going to do is just a tapping motion. There's nothing to it, and it's just going to bleed all over the paper, and you want it to. You want it to just kind of go all over. Don't worry about it, you know, keeping it concentrated, or it has to be in a specific shape. So I'm going to take some of this purple here, and then I'm going to do that same uh, padding. But you'll notice it's not blending as much, and you can see it's kind of stained put where it's at, so that's okay. So in order to make that bleed more, we're going to go ahead and take some water and put a little bit more on. Okay, and let it bleed a little bit more. And as I add more color, you're going to be able to see that. So here I'm going to pick up the pink, and there it goes. You can see it start to bleed. So I want it to just be kind of random. So I'm just going to go ahead and flick my brush and let it go all over. And right now these are showing up as these vibrant kind of dots. But as this dries, it will kind of soften and fade out. And it, it turns into a really kind of beautiful, soft look. It's really, really gorgeous. So we're just gonna let all this dry and let it continue to bleed. I'm gonna add a little bit more water before I do that because I really want um, that to bleed well. And I want you to see um, on the edges, there are spots where it's kind of starting to pool. And I uh, see right there, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take, um, this is like a, it's a little drink cozy. It's called the Thirsty Coaster, but I love using it for water coloring. It makes for a nice cleanup. So I'm just going to gently tap that, and it just soaks that right up without kind of disturbing the color and where it's at. And I like to use that to just get the parts that are all pulled up, like here at the top. So again, I'm just going to do that. Just, you know, just gently stamp it. Just press it down. It'll pick it up without moving your color around. You can see the colors are really starting to bleed now. You can see how it turns into something that once was really vibrant. Now it's softening. It's really beautiful. So we're going to go ahead and let that dry and let it do its thing. Okay, now it's completely dry, and I just want you to see how gorgeous those colors blend together. Now, if your paper gets bent because of the wetness, don't worry about it. You can just kind of bend it a little bit. It'll go right back into shape. And remember, we're going to be gluing that down so it won't matter. So I have this gorgeous peony stamp from Stampendous. It's one of my absolute favorites to use. And this is going to be perfect over the watercolor. But when I use a big stamp, I really like to put my paper down on top of it so I can press firmly. So I'm going to go ahead and ink up my stamp with some Memento Black ink. And I'm sorry if I get a little overzealous here pushing down my ink. Um, I got a little excited. So that's why the camera's shaking and things are kind of going all over. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get as much ink as I can on there because this paper is porous. So now I'm just going to take it and line it up. 
and then go ahead and press down. Now don't be afraid to take a moment and go ahead and press down firmly and as much as you possibly can. And the reason for that is because of course you don't want to have to try and do this all over again, especially since you've made this gorgeous watercolor paper. So let's take a look at what it looks like. And there it is. Okay, now I've gone ahead and cut it down to four and three eighths by six inches, and then I have my black cardstock uh, that's six and a half by four and three quarters. So I'm just going to take my Tombow um, runner and I'm just going to put some adhesive on the back, and then I'm just going to go ahead and put that centered right on the front of the card. Really simple, really easy. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a sentiment. Now I just smeared it, but don't worry about that because we're going to cover it up. I went ahead and stamped and uh, embossed my sentiment beforehand because this is my first video and I don't have my heat gun set up on that side of my room. So I want to show you this really nice stamp. It's from Simon Says Stamp. And I really love um, how they give you a mix of silhouette stamps and a lot of phrases. So I went ahead and used I Count Myself Lucky. And I'm just going to add a little bit of foam tape to the back of that. Give the card a little bit of dimension, which is always nice. Now you're going to see here that I'm going to actually wipe off the phrase because I forgot to completely emboss the entire image. But that's okay. Mistakes are okay because we can work with that. So there it goes. There goes my K and my Y, and that's okay. So I'm just going to simply wipe off the rest of that, and I'm going to fix it at the end of the video. But I'm going to take some of these gorgeous kind of Aurora Borealis, is what I like to call them, um, rhinestones, and one there. And then, of course, we want to do things in odd numbers because that always looks good together. So we're going to do a grouping of three rhinestones in our center. And there you can see there's the watercolor card done with the exception of course of my K and the Y so I'm gonna go ahead and take that away come back and it's fixed so there it is simple fast easy anybody can do this don't let watercoloring intimidate you just go for it and have fun be sure to join me every Tuesday for another technique